project managers will be needed in large numbers across the world soon. I sat down with Herman Grunewald. He's the director of HPG um, Project Management Consulting. Herman is an internationally certified um, project manager since 2013 and has also moved into the project management training industry. So you are more than welcome to contact him if you need to know what your next move in your project management career is. Let's talk business. Good morning, Herman. So nice to have you here with me today on the Strategy Maker podcast. Um, we started working together about more than a year ago already. And I got to learn a little bit, a tiny bit about project management from you. So I would like you to introduce yourself and tell our audience what um, you are all about first, personally and on your in your career, and then we will um, start discussing your business. Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning and thanks for having me. Um, <clears throat> okay, just a little bit about myself. My name is Herman Grunewald. And um, yeah, I grew up in uh, the Northern Cape. Um, uh, in a place called Posmasburg, small little town there, not so small anymore, but when I was there, it was still small. So uh, yeah, from there on, I went to study at the University of uh, Pretoria. After finishing school, I studied political science and um, strategic studies. And then basically the first part of my career, I you know, was employed in that field and I focused on that field. And then um, basically midway through my career, I made a career change and moved over to project management, went back to university and um, studied advanced project management. And then in 2013, I started my own business uh, in project management, HPG project management. And I have been busy with that ever since. So, yeah, just very shortly, that is me and uh, what I do for a living. That's quite an interesting journey you had. Um, and um, I, I didn't realize, well, I think we have spoke about our backgrounds. I'm also a Northern Cape girl from Frisco. So we know harsh winters and warm, hot summers and yeah. far off places. So that's actually, <laughs> I, I always say that... Um, the Northern Cape people are from a different breed because we know mm. how to persevere. Um, <laughs> so tell me more about HPG uh, Project Management Consulting. Um, first of all, what are the services you offer and what is this all about? Okay, so HPG Project Management, as I've mentioned, I started the company in 2013. And basically the company focuses on two areas of project management. The first one is project management training. So where we provide uh, different training services, training uh, courses for project managers from you know, very basic level up to international certification level. And then the other uh, leg of the business is the consulting part. So doing consulting on projects, um, you know, looking at client projects at maturity levels, how well they are doing, and then assisting clients, you know, if their projects doesn't work um, with regards to setting it up correctly, getting their processes uh, in place, and then also, you know, managing projects for clients. So those are the two major areas that we focus on in the business. Uh, currently, um, yeah, and uh, you know, in, in throughout the COVID period, um, there was also quite a lot of changes that we had to make to the business. You know, going fully online with all our training courses, which wasn't like that before. Um, so that also opened up some different opportunities for us along the way. Uh, what I didn't realize when I started working with you is that project management, if from my point of view, I always thought, okay, it's mostly engineers um, and obviously in this construction business mm -hmm. um, and uh, property development, stuff like that, that you need a project manager, which is obviously one of the main um, industries. But tell me um, other kind of industries or businesses that needs project managers these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, traditionally, uh, you know, project management was just 
or, or, or basically emanated out of those kind of industries, your building engineering industry, military industries, places like that. But the world has changed quite a bit. Um, and also basically every single industry now does projects and do business on project management principles. So um, the industries that are really, or that really came to the forefront in the last few years are basically the services industry. And most services uh, companies run really, really big projects. And, um, and then also on the digital side, um, there are loads and loads of companies in the digital space that are now doing projects as well. And it's becoming very prominent um, in, in those uh, areas. Um, uh, basically a third area as well is the environmental side. So environmental project management is also something that is really uh, taking off in terms of you know, running projects uh, in an environmentally friendly manner and also, you know, uh, doing it responsibly at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, actually, uh, across the whole spectrum of business and business environments, companies are doing projects um, because they don't really have a choice. You know, uh, you need to be agile these days. You need to pivot very quickly in the changing environments that we are in. And, and projects help you to do that uh, in your business. And I assume if you do project management, obviously it is to uh, to keep to a, a, a timeline, a time frame, but also to save the, the project money to deliver on the exact times mm -hmm. and to um, use your resources to the full limit. Um, so there's a huge cost factor embedded in project management. Yeah, for sure. Um, basically, uh, there are quite a lot of constraints that you need to look at uh, when it comes to a project. Um, and uh, basically, your three major constraints is cost, first of all, because everything costs money, yeah. your time or your schedules, and then your scope or, or what you need to do in mm. the project. So if you can control um, and, and manage those three aspects in a project, then most probably your project will be successful. On the other mm -hmm. hand, if those three things get out of control, then the project normally runs over time and over budget and there needs to be corrections made the whole time. And some of, some of the times the projects fail because of certain um, you know, influences either inside or outside the project that, um, that influences one of the three constraints that I just talked about. And then normally the project come crashing down or it needs to be changed, uh, you know, as you go on with the project. And in a typical meeting, project management meeting, say for instance, you're working on a project, uh, a construction project with the team, uh, who will all be part of the meeting? Yeah, normally um, it depends. You've got different kinds of meetings, um, but normally the project team and the project manager, of course, your client, uh, your service providers that you utilize on the project. So it depends on the kind of meetings that you have as well. You know, if you have mm -hmm. site meetings, then most probably your contractors will be there with the project manager. If you have feedback meetings to higher authority or your project sponsor or your client, then different people are in uh, the different meetings. So the, the one thing is that in, in a project, there are normally quite a lot of meetings because there's loads of communication that needs to take place, especially if the project has kicked off and being executed at the end of the day. And the project manager is actually pivotal uh, there to make sure that the communication and very clear communication uh, goes out to all the different parties and the different stakeholders involved in the project and also to coordinate everything that needs to happen in the project as the project then progress. So uh, in order to, to consider uh, doing project management as a career, uh, what kind of, um, first of all, obviously uh, personal skills you need, but mm. what kind of personality will fit this kind of job well? Okay, I... <clears throat> um, Look, in, in different industries, obviously, you need different kinds of people. So most probably an engineer is not the same personality type as a digital marketer, for example. But 
in order to run a project as a project manager uh, and do it successfully. Firstly, I would say a person needs to be a generalist, um, not so much a specialist. Um, you have people working on the project as part of your project team that are specialists in certain areas, but the person who coordinates everything and makes sure that the uh, project works correctly, uh, the project manager, in other words, must be a generalist. So that person must uh, uh, have a different or, or quite a wide range uh, of skills, things like uh, good planning skills, good people skills or managing people because you, you work with people the whole time communication skills, negotiation skills. So wow. um, just to mention a few. So there's quite a lot of different skill sets or, or skills that you need to have um, in your little toolbox. And, um, you know, uh, that is quite essential for, for doing projects successfully. And mm -hmm. because it is such a diverse environment that you need to work in and you need to manage up and down and horizontally. So... Um, you need to equip yourself to be able to do that successfully at the end of the day. So the way I see it is that the project manager is kind of the pivotal point and everybody, mm. everything flows through that person. So I must ask you, what do you do with the guys or uh, team members that doesn't keep to the time limit? And if you, if you really <laughs> think they are just slack, they're not listening or they're not bringing their part, yeah, well, that's always a challenge for every manager, I guess. And <laughs> the thing in, in, in project management is you are normally on quite a lot of, uh, quite a tight deadline, and normally you mm -hmm. don't have enough time to finish the project. So I think what is really important there is from the beginning that the team members that are working with you and as well as your service providers and contractors, you need to be very clear with them from the beginning on what is the time constraints, what is their role in the project, and if they don't complete things on time, what is the effect of that down the line in, in, in terms of a project? Because everything is linked to one another in a project. It is, um, uh, you know, there's a chain reaction that goes down the line if, if something runs over time or you, you don't make your schedule. So that's the first thing I think good and clear communication is really mm -hmm. important. And then the second thing is people need to take responsibility for what they need to do on the project. And if you can get that right, then you are halfway there. So um, it's, a, it's a really good idea if you set up a project that the team members around you are really competent people, people that are willing to work on the project um, and also that are, uh, you know, dynamic self-starters that, if you give them work to do that they will do it you give them deadlines they deliver on the deadlines um, otherwise your job becomes really really difficult because as a project manager you need to look at quite a lot of different aspects and then if your people management then becomes overpowering then the project management mm. function actually moves to the background and then you start running into trouble yeah um so Obviously, like you mentioned, project management has shifted into different industries. And um, what I've seen is obviously the, the IT part. Uh, so it's not only digital systems and your, your online presence mm -hmm. and the digital marketing side, but it's also your IT um, processes and, and IT structures in bigger companies. Um, if you must... Um, tell uh, uh, an 18 year old today, what do they need to consider to maybe go and study to get into this space? Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of different opportunities out there and there are more and more of them opening up, you know, as uh, new jobs are created, technology um, is advancing and uh, in, in different areas, IT and digital and you know, even in the traditional project management uh, spaces like construction, et cetera, et cetera, there's quite a lot of new um, technologies and positions opening up. So um, I, I would say that someone needs to have a look at, um, you know, if, if they want to or if they are the kind of people that want to go into this uh, kind of industry, first of all, um, they need to be someone that can handle change. They need to be someone that can uh, manage um, 
you know, difficult situations and, and stay calm and do what they need to do. Mm. And yeah, then, you know, um, I think it is a very good career um, because according to the Project Management Institute, over the next five to seven years worldwide, there are going to be something like eight or nine million project managers needed for new wow. projects. Wow. So the, the, the scope is out there in terms of, um, you know, people going into the industry and the industry can still just grow and grow and grow. And it normally will grow with new technologies. So, um, you know, there's also a lot of supporting industries to, to projects. Uh, just a simple example, if you look at technology, you don't have to be a project manager in a technology field. You can be a specialist and still work on projects, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and get those skills from there. So they, there's quite a, quite a vast array of, of different jobs and, and um, you know, opportunities available for someone um, that wants to, to study project management. And, and if you want to study, that's fine, but there's another route that you can do as well. And that is um, basically to start working for a, a company and through the company with your experience, start building up your project management knowledge through courses, through certifications, those kind of things as well. Okay. And just to be clear, um, tell the, uh, us what is, how do you define a project? Well, um, a project normally, uh, if we can break it down to the bare bones here, it's a change intervention. Okay, so basically it is something that takes you from point A to point B. Um, and normally in an, uh, an organization or privately as well, a project you can see as <clears throat> you have a current situation which isn't working or there's something wrong or something needs to change and you want to move to somewhere else. And the way to get there is mm -hmm. basically a project because from moving from point A to point B, you need to plan how you're gonna do it. Uh, you need to look at costs, you need to look at resources, you need to look at all of these constraints that we talked about. And then you need to make a plan on how you are gonna do it because it's not gonna happen on its own. You as the project manager must manage it from point A to point B successfully at the end of the day. Okay, so yeah, that's basically how I would uh, just very quickly sum up what is a project. Okay, so um, currently, obviously, the whole world is moving through this pandemic situation, and, and I'm sure the, the construction building project management industry has been affected hugely. What are the trends that you see? Um, how severe is it? Is it concerning? Um, do you see a lot of people struggling or are people heading mm. forward? Yeah, I think it's uh, influenced uh, different aspects of, of industry in a different manner. For example, your traditional, uh, if you can talk about the more traditional uh, project management industries like building and construction and so forth, I think they were really hard hit, especially with hard lockdowns and things like that. But then if you look at the online environment through COVID, it was pushed absolutely to the forefront. People just went online with everything. So uh, in, in that space, there was a lot of development and a lot of work and a lot of opportunities that came out of a crisis. Mm. So I think it affected people in a different manner. If I can just speak uh, on behalf of my business before COVID, COVID our online training was 5%, 10% of our wow. whole business. And then throughout COVID, it became 100%. Uh, we had to just move online, which we did. Mm. And um, now I would say we are not post COVID yet, but we are open, much more open than with the hard lockdowns. I would say 80% is online training mm. now, and I don't think it's gonna change in future. So yeah, there were different ways that it influenced different organizations, but I think in general, there were a lot of people that went through really hard times, especially the small, medium to smaller businesses. 
um, not only through COVID, but also through, um, you know, uh, the whole environment where we are currently in, in South Africa in terms of economic, um, the economic situation. And also I think what had a big, big influence and it was just exacerbated by COVID is the, um, how can I call this, the, the hostile um, mm. business environment that we need to work in currently in South Africa due to government policies. Okay, so that plays a big role. If I can mention one word um, listening to you, it seems to me that a, a project manager must be able to, to solve problems mm -hmm. from, from the start of the day till the end of the day. And you uh, obviously need people to help solve those problems and a plan and all of that. So if you don't have a lot of tenacity and you don't like mm -hmm. to work through problem solving, <laughs> I would not think you would like to do this kind of um, business or job. So for, uh, before we move on to the training part, which I think is an important part for your business, I would like you to tell us about an interesting in incident while you were managing a project or something fun that happened perhaps or even very dangerous that happened to all you were working on a project <laughs> let's start with a with a dangerous one first okay um in 2017 we were busy with a um with a maintenance project on a building and the building was i think 17 or 18 stories high and we were working on top of the building and we had a site meeting uh, on top of the building. And um, the, the client and a lot of other people were there. And unfortunately, we couldn't have the meeting anywhere else. We had to have it on site there. And one of the people went to the edge of the building to look down. And the safety officer nearly <laughs> had a heart attack because yeah. If that person would have fallen <laughs> off there, there would have been major, major issues. So, yeah, you need to look out for those kind of things as well. So, um, yeah, these these kind of things do happen, um, and you you need to be on your game the whole time to to make sure that um, you know yeah. everyone is is aligned to what we, you're doing. Because not all people that come on site or that are busy or uh, with the project are all, all always in tune with. The rules and regulations and the safety aspects of a project especially mm -hmm. you know if work is taking place mm -hmm. in in a project so I, would but, yeah, think, uh, I would think you must consider where you have your side meetings yeah 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 for sure you need to but sometimes <laughs> you need to be on site you know you need to be on yeah, site to show people certain things so you yeah. just need to make sure that everything is is done according to the book and then, um, yeah, I've, I've done a few projects overseas as well. Um, and, and that was quite challenging, you know, different cultures, different language. And um, yeah, if you have to work through interpreters and you need to do projects, you need to really stay calm and keep cool because there's loads of communication problems that takes place. <clears throat> People understand you or don't understand you correctly. But yeah, it, you, you learn through that, you know, and, and you learn to speak sign language and, you know, um, your nuances, people get what you what you try to tell them at the end of the day. Yeah, that can be a lot can be lost in translation. And I mm. suppose um, in other countries, people use different uh, methods and different building materials or the different structuring methods and mm. all of that. So you need to catch up with all the um, the way they approach things. Yeah, yeah. So sure. a, a, a big part of your business is obviously your training courses. Tell me, how did you, when did you start developing uh, these courses and why is this um, uh, one of your focuses? Mm -hmm. I actually started uh, developing project management training courses <clears throat> way before I, um, you know, started my own business because I worked for other companies um, and, you know, in their project management department and, you know, we did a lot of training there. So a lot of that knowledge I brought over to um, my own business when I started it in 2013. 
And yeah, we started basically off with one course, um, just a very basic project management course. And from there on, we built out the courses, you know, so today we have basically courses on all the different project management levels from introduction to project management up to your, um, you know, PMP certification courses uh, and preparation courses for international certification and everything in between. And then also, you know, quite a lot of uh, some clients that we had over the years wanted to have specific courses. So we tailor made certain courses for them that only look at a certain aspect of project management or different methodologies that they use because people or companies use different methodologies. For example, um, you know, the banking industry and SARS use a different methodology than, for example, a construction company and so forth mm -hmm. and so forth. So we cater for those kind of things as well. And yeah, we, we, we basically present the courses and, and our main focus in the course. Oh, yes. Before I go to the main focus, um, our courses are accredited and non-accredited. So we do actually both. And the simple reason for that is some companies want it accredited, you know, go through the SIETA system and get the credits for that. But other companies just want the skills. They want their people to have the actual project management skills. Mm -hmm. And that is our main focus as well with our courses is to give people the skills to go and do the projects because project management is a practical discipline. You need to have the skill to do it. It doesn't help you only have the book knowledge. So all of our courses are based on theory and practice. So basically 50, 50, 50. So you need to have the theory, but you need to understand how to take the theory and, and, and you know, convert it into practically applying it in the work situation and thinking on your feet uh, when you are busy with a project in order to make it successful at the end of the day. So we will share your um, website and where people can get hold of these courses. Because currently you are actually doing everything online and everything is available that they can either buy it on your website or they can join um, for the for the bigger PMP course. Um, but tell me if you need to guide me through it. I want to start now. Uh, which course do I need to do first? Well, <clears throat> most people. Okay, let me say it like this. Let's say you are a school leader now and you just came out of school, I would say you need to do the introduction to project management, you know, because then it is really an introduction where you, we just introduce you to all the different concepts, how it works, et cetera, et cetera. But if you do have some work uh, experience already, then most probably you've been exposed to a project along the way somewhere. So normally we advise people that uh, are already working or studied already to do the fundamentals of project management. So that gives you a very good basis of what a project is about, how to plan the project uh, in the correct manner. And then also, you know, in terms of the execution, how you need to do the project successfully. And from there on, you can then move up um, uh, the ladder, if I can call it like that, to more advanced project management courses where we dig deeper into the nuances of actually doing the project correctly. So the execution or the implementation of that. And then, uh, you know, after that, we, we do have the, the higher certification courses, but those are for experienced project managers that has quite a lot of experience already, uh, you know, in, in actually leading projects at the end of the day. So the entry level ones that you've mentioned is available on your website to purchase yes. from there and you do it uh, on your own timeline as a self-study. Yeah, there's basically three ways that you can do the, the, the courses. The first one is face-to-face. Uh, -face. That's a classroom situation. Uh, and, and before COVID, we did quite a lot of that for, at companies. So we go to the company, the people are there and we do the courses for them. The second way is it's kind of like a hybrid course. So we do it online, but it's facilitator led. So uh, there's a facilitator, it's, it's like a, a normal class, but it's just online. And then the third way is totally online. It is a standalone course, uh, which you can do on your own time. There's video clips, there's exercises, and you, you purchase the course and you do it on your own time and then you know, we do, you do it on our platform and uh, then, uh, you know, after you finish, we give you a certificate of completion uh, after that course. 
which make it even better for people who works, um, for mm -hmm. instance, in other countries, um, they're far away from home and they've got some time to kill in the evening. So um, mm -hmm. they, they only actually need internet access and they can still keep studying while they're working. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that is one of the um, major benefits of, of doing something online. Uh, you can study any time that you want to. But I'm sure um, you you miss the interaction sometimes that you would like to have mm -hmm. interaction with your students or feedback or, or questions. Yeah, that that is true. Um, with the facilitator led courses, you 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 get quite a lot of that, but it's not the same as face to face. Um, the face to face courses actually, I think, for you know knowledge transfer and learning from one another and learning from the facilitator is still the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, you you change with the situation uh, as it is, and you play the situation that is in front of you. So um, uh, you know, uh, if you need to do it online, you need to do it mm -hmm. online, and we try to to make the experience as as best as possible. Luckily, with uh, some of the platforms that we use, like Zoom, they are upgrading that the whole time, so people can now go into breakaway rooms and you know talk to one another and then come back to the main room and we discuss it. So the simulation is more or less the same now as face to face, but still face to face is is actually the best. Mm. And you also have an interactive uh, Facebook group where your uh, students or interested people can um, communicate with you or ask questions. Yeah, um, for the higher level courses, we do have that. It's a, it's a closed Facebook group where we um, all the people that join our courses are automatically part of that. And then they can access quite a lot of extra material and resources and videos that we that we post there. And it helps them with their preparations, especially with mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the international certifications and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they can post questions there and it's a forum that you can talk to. But yeah, it's a closed group. So, um, you know, you need to sign up for the courses and then you get access to all that um, uh, extra resources as well. Okay. So for our audience, we will share all Herman's um, credentials below the, um, the video. Um, where you can get hold of him or um, access all these courses. Um, so, Herman, I want to discuss the PMP prep course because I think this is the main thing that we see a big shift in. A lot of people do have the experience in the uh, different ex uh, industries, and all of a sudden uh, they either want to immigrate or they want to be able mm. to get um, international contracts and play in the bigger um, area of the, in, the industries. Um, tell us what is the PMP prep course all about? Yeah, I agree with you. We've we've seen a lot, a lot of that in in the last year or so, especially in South Africa. But yeah, the, the PMP prep course is <clears throat> the preparation for the project management professional exam. Um, that are being administered by the Project Management Institute in America. And the course is set up in such a way that it prepares you to go and write the exam and to pass it successfully the first time around, because it is a really difficult exam. It's an international exam, so the standards are quite high for this exam, and um, one needs to prepare really well. So what we do is we have for that course uh, an international um, handbook, you know, that's been recognized internationally as one of the better handbooks in the world that we use. And, and we have a partnership with uh, an American company with regards to this. And then also um, as part of that whole package, we have, um, you know, a PMP exam simulator, which is a really, really nice tool with over 2000 exam questions, some really difficult questions that people use to prepare themselves for the exam. So those are the two major things that that um, uh, that we have in the course and that we utilize and in order to prepare people thoroughly for the course. And then obviously there is quite a lot of facilitator intervention as well. And we discuss quite a lot of the different topics, questions, what to expect uh, on the exam and also how to prepare yourself thoroughly for the exam and answer the questions correctly. 
But people also do need to submit the um, portfolios to the PMI in order to be um, able to do the exam. Yes. Yeah. And what um, would you recommend them on that portfolio before the? Obviously, they've got the experience, but to yeah. make life easier for them, how can they prepare them for the portfolio? Yeah, the, the, the portfolio basically consists out of your experience with regards to uh, being a project manager, managing projects and leading projects. So um, depending on your qualifications that you have, if you have a degree, you need to be able to um, show three years of being uh, in charge of projects or being a project manager or a lead project manager and if you don't have a degree it is five years so before you write the exam you need to put this together upload it um, on your profile at pmi they look at it and then they will tell you if it is sufficient or not we also give you quite a lot of guidelines in terms of that that you know there's not this back and forth between you and the pmi the whole time that you submit it once and it's fine and then the PMI uh, will then uh, send you a letter or an email these days to say, yes, you qualify for the exam, and then you can go on and start writing the exam. And how do you actually do the exam? Well, there are two ways that you can do the exam. You can go to an exam center. The PMI use Pearson View as internationally as their uh, preferred exam center. And there's quite a few of them in South Africa as well. It's part and parcel of the course. We give you all the instructions of how to go there, uh, you know, or where they are rather, and how to uh, book for your course on, uh, or for your exam, sorry, on, on, on the system and so forth. And the other way is that you can do it through the PMI itself. Um, we call it a proctored exam where the PMI have a proctor on the other side of your camera. And that person then basically see um, or, or check that you do the exam correctly. So you can sit in your sitting room or in your wherever you want mm -hmm. to, and you can do the exam from there, depending obviously on um, you know, how you book the exam and if the proctors are available because uh, you know, it, the chances are very good that your proctor may be sitting in America or in India or wherever the case might mm. be. So that one is actually uh, um, the, the, the timeline permitting. So mm. you might might yeah. be sitting in South Africa and do it like during the, the night because your yeah. proctor yeah. only locked in. Sure. Okay. Um, so the the well the training industry in itself is so competitive these days because you can literally uh, learn to do anything online and I think it's even more competitive in the project management um, mm. part. Um, what do you offer your students that set you apart from um, your competition? I think the main thing is, and I've mentioned it before. <clears throat> is the whole point of view is that um, you need to make sure or we need to make sure that you have the practical skills to go and do the project. So yes, it's all good and well to, to check out a YouTube video on how someone else has done it, but the thing is, can you do it? And in, in the courses, it is set up in such a way that with the practical exercises, um, that we do, we actually teach you how to go and implement the theoretical part of project management. Because if you don't have the theory under control, it becomes very difficult to do it practically. Mm. And you need to know if things do go wrong in a project, what do you need to do? And, and the only way that you can do that is to know theory and practical or practice and, and bring the two together you know, uh, as a coherent whole at the end of the day. So I think that that's the one area that we really focus on and, and, and make sure that people, once they've done the course, that they understand what project management is actually about and also can then immediately go out and start doing it and, and implementing it in their work environments to start making an immediate impact on the projects that they are busy with. Which is all you can, well, that's a need today. You can't only have book knowledge. You must be able to go mm. and implement, obviously. Yeah, um, for sure. The, the PMI has 
shifted gears earlier this year, I think in January 2021, mm. and they've upgraded the standards of this whole process as well, and they've included a few new um, concepts as well. Which ones uh, do we need to know about? Okay, previously um, the exam, the PMP exam, only focused on the project management body of knowledge, the PMBOK methodology. And that is the biggest methodology in the world currently. There are a few other ones as well, but that is the one being used globally the most by most companies. So what happened is that with the changing environment, especially with, as we talked about, technology uh, being very prominent these days and different um, spheres of business uh, coming into play when it comes to projects now, um, it, it became necessary to change the point of view and to also change the exam as well. So what they've done is <clears throat> they've included the agile methodology as well um, in the exam because Agile as a methodology uh, is getting a lot of traction these days, especially in your IT environment, in your digital environment, and the way that, you know, environments where there's a high rate of change taking place in, in projects. And your traditional or waterfall kind of project management doesn't work so well there. Uh, it works really well if you do construction projects, but not in the IT environment because there are constant changes taking place the whole time. So you need to be much more agile in the way that you set up projects and, and manage the changes. So that is the major change that took place. And with the new exams, you need to prepare for both the methodology. So actually it's double the work than before. But um, at the end of the day, it makes you a much more rounded uh, or rounded off project manager with knowledge of different methodologies as well. I assume the, the globalization and obviously the whole world moving online as, as mm. um, uh, that's the reason why we need the, the agile approach as well, because changes are so quick, it's within days and you can't roll it out over months um, yeah. as, no, as to sure. the traditional methods. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I want to ask you about a few business things, how you approach it and how do you see it. Are you following mm -hmm. a specific business model for your business or do you have a specific strategy that you're currently pursuing? Yeah, basically the business model and I think also uh, with the whole COVID situation, things changed quite a lot. But the whole business model that I follow is uh, the projectized business model. So that means <clears throat> flat business structure, outsourcing quite a lot of work um, and utilizing people on a contract basis. So in other words, uh, you know, if, if we have projects to do, I get in certain people in a network uh, that I know can do the work. I bring them into the project, they do the work, we pay them, they move out of the uh, project or the business. So uh, the, the, the whole idea is to keep your business agile, that you can change very quickly with situations that change around you and you don't have a lot of overhead. Um, you know, these days we can do most of what we need to do online. And also, um, you know, they talk about pivoting, that you can pivot your business quite quickly and yeah. can, um, you know, uh, apply what you need to do uh, in different environments in and, and different clients quite quickly. So that's basically the business model that I that I follow and it, and, and it works really well. And yeah, there's always work to be done on a business model, but mm. as we go along, we, we refine it and see how we can, can make it better. Mm. So are there specific uh, business principles or business skills that you struggle with? Um, yeah, there, there are. There's always room for improvement. Um, I, I think the, the major one, as, as most small businesses or medium-sized businesses as well, uh, struggle with the marketing side of it because normally as a project manager, you are more inclined to do the planning and the execution of, of projects. But if you need to run a business, you need to look at the marketing side as well. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, that is sometimes a really, really big challenge because if something in the project needs to happen now, it needs to happen now. And then everything is moved to the back burner. And, and most probably the marketing goes marketing to the back burner project, as well. Yeah. And marketing is really necessary. Otherwise, you don't have new clients, you don't, can't move forward, et cetera, et cetera. So that is one aspect where I think um, a lot of work still needs to be done. And it's something mm. that I work on on a continuous basis. I, I also uh, must say that um, from three years ago up to now, we've come a long way, especially with digital marketing, you know, marketing in different channels um, and reaching a wider audience of people, um, you know, but there's still a lot of work to do in that area, mm -hmm. for sure. And which methods do you uh, currently find feasible? Which platforms do you use? Um, use Facebook quite a lot for advertising, um, YouTube, you know, placing, <clears throat> sorry, placing videos on YouTube. Um, I've, I've really in the last year focused quite a lot on, on YouTube and only now it starts getting traction. It takes quite a while to do it, but there are some of the videos that are getting good traction now, especially internationally. So, um, yeah, Google as well. We used Google before, not so much at this stage, but it's also one of the, um, the areas that you can utilize quite, quite well. And then obviously your, um, you know, all of those things needs to be linked to your website and your website needs to be up and running. And you can do a lot of things these days with your website in terms of, especially if you have online courses, the selling of courses, you know, um, getting people to your website and, 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 you know, giving them a good experience of, of what your business is about. Which part of the business um, energizes you the, the most? The ones that you, you do first thing in the morning because you like it? <laughs> Looking how many <laughs> views I have on the videos. <laughs> So, Obviously, yeah. oh, how many leads were generated? Yeah, for sure. They, there's quite a lot of them um, that energizes me. The uh, yeah, obviously, if you're busy with campaigns to get new clients, there's always follow-ups to do and, you know, talk to the clients and see what their, what their requirements are. But then also, you know, the whole planning aspect to, to start something up from new, I like to do mm -hmm. that quite often, you know, uh, where there was nothing creating something and, and doing the planning and see, you know, how that progresses. So, yeah, I like that aspect uh, of, of the business quite a lot. And which ones do you leave for last? <laughs> um, yeah, I would say the marketing stuff normally, <laughs> but then, then the admin stuff as well. Um, yeah, we all need to do admin and sometimes you just need to sit down and do the admin, but it's not the exciting part of the business, but it's part and parcel of it. So you don't get paid if you yeah. don't do the admin. So one needs to do that as well and just get your, your head around that and do it. I must tell you what, um, I've been an entrepreneur for so many years and in my first little businesses that I've started, I've always, and that was still the time of hard copies. You, you keep the invoicing and you've got mm. files and all of that. The digital side is so much better for me. I'm I'm really getting better at that skill. Mm -hmm. And I think from where we've come and how you can manage your, your own business now on literally one device makes life a lot, a lot easier. Yeah. Although things sure. can still slip through the cracks because <laughs> you, you're postponing everything. Yeah. Um, future plans, let's talk about that. Where do you see your business in a few years' time? <clears throat> Okay, um, obviously everyone wants to, to grow their business. So one of the major goals that I have is within the next two to three years to have at least 50 to 80% of clients overseas. Um, and I think that just comes out of the whole South African situation that we are in, in terms to be realistic about that. So that's one of the major things that where I'm pushing towards. And then also uh, the other uh, major push now is to do uh, quite a lot more consulting work on projects for clients because with the whole COVID situation, um, at certain stages that came to a total dead stop because, mm -hmm. you know, of hard lockdowns and so forth. 
And as companies start recovering, um, I, I think that's going to be one of the big areas for growth in the future. So those are the two main things that I'm looking mm -hmm. at currently. Uh, you know what, a few years ago, the, the buzzword was globalization. <clears throat> and um, I never thought we could, we will get to the point where a, a single owner entrepreneur will be able to access that global um, mm. platform uh, so actually so easily you only need a developed product and obviously a marketing budget and hopefully you will access that mm. that um, fragment or segment of the market as well so yeah. let's talk about your 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 personal um, things a few insightful things that we can learn from you um, are you a reader? Which is your? Uh, do you have favorite books? Maybe a business mm. book or. A... Yeah, I I do read quite a lot if I do have the time and I like doing reading. So I'm busy now with um, a book, The Small Business Entrepreneur by Rory Burke. I've read the book before, but the second time around I read it in more detail. So I'm busy with that one currently. And then on top of that, there's always three or four other books lying around that I'm reading um, at the same time. I like to read uh, novels as well, spy stories, things like that, and also a lot of history stuff. Okay. Um, because I do like that as well. So there's always like three or four books lying around that I'm busy with reading <laughs> over time. Okay, so you do read fiction as well? Mm, yeah, quite a lot of that as well, if I do have the time. Yeah, obviously. And I think our problem, uh, I'm also a keen reader, but I, I see that there's a total distraction for me with online videos. Uh, mm. It's quicker to, to watch a video than to, to read through the whole book or even read a discussion of the book. Um, but you must have a sit down and say to yourself, it's not the real thing before you mm. have really read the book. What yeah, I also I see, sure. like you said now with the, with the book the second time around, I think you get more out of, of specifically such a, a book that you're reading now or referring to is because you have developed and because mm. your business has impacted on you, 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 you catch new phrases or new things make sense to you to implement mm. in your businesses. Yeah. No, for sure. So we're going to share obviously all your social media channels and where people can follow you. Um, and as well as your uh, your website that we can do. Uh, do you have specific icons in the industry where you work in? Are there people that we need to know about? Yeah, actually, I'm I'm, I'm just thinking quickly. There, there are quite uh, quite a lot of people, um, but one of the icons that I that I follow quite a lot is Elon Musk. Um, he's not totally in the project management industry, but um, I do like what he's doing for a few reasons. Um, I think he's got a lot of tenacity. When the naysayers was, was on him, he just put his head down, he went ahead and he did what he uh, had to do. And over time, he built a huge company, very successful companies, and also he's a trendsetter now. And, and he's one of the people that are creating the blue oceans that we talk about or that people talk about and, um, you know, pushing, absolutely pushing the frontiers and the, and the envelope in certain areas. So I think there's a lot that can be learned from him uh, in terms of business and just, you know, uh, you know, coming from South Africa uh, and, and, and being a global player, you can do that you know, if you have mm. the tenacity to do that at the end of the day. So I follow the things that he does quite uh, a lot. And um, there's always something new with him. If he's not busy mm. boring tunnels in the ground, he's sending people to Mars and so <laughs> forth and so forth. So um, yeah, I, I like what he does. I think he's one of those people that doesn't want to hear the word no. He mm. wants to hear, I will think about it, I will work on it, I will adjust, yeah. whatever, but you don't, you don't <laughs> tell him, no, Elon, it's not going to work. So sure. <laughs> I think mm -hmm. that, that kind of personality is needed in the current situation we're in. Okay, so we're going to conclude, and I am going to fire a few um, words at you, and you mm -hmm. must give me a rapid answer on that. Um, <clears throat> you, can, uh, you can either give one word or maybe a, a, a short description. 
So um, okay. my first word I want to, to ask you is in entrepreneurship. Tenacity. Um, work ethic. Um, very much needed these days. Globalization. Opportunity. Um, and growth. Um, hard work. Yeah, that's sure. And then the last one I want to ask you is Mercedes Benz. History. Um, and also, oh, oh, let me say it like this, um, the use of history to a positive, uh, in, in a positive manner to shape your future. That's how I see them. Amazing. Just for our viewers, uh, Herman is a keen Mercedes-Benz, uh, what will I call you? Support? Uh, yeah, um, it's one of user. my passions. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's absolutely one of, one of, so, one of his um, passions that he, he pursues in his, in his free time. Herman, it was such a pleasure to have you and to learn about the project management industry and your business. Mm. We're certainly going to share everything with our audience and if there's anybody who wants to contact you, you, they will be able to find you online. And thanks for being with us. I hope you have an amazing journey forward and that your uh, business will be blessed. Thank you. Mm, th thank you very much. And uh, thanks for having me here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.